It's Entomology Animated, celebrating the amazing biology of insects using the power of digital animation. Ding. Okay, so now I'm starting to detail the top of the cephalothorax. Uh, after all that technical stuff, I get to have the fun part, which is creating these nifty little details. So I'm using the DAM or Damien Standard Brush, also known as the DAM Standard Brush, D-A-M. And I'm going in and just bringing out some of these cracks a little bit more. I'm also using the inflate and form soft brushes to kind of create sort of bulges and depressions. And, you know, also the Damien Standard Brush, I'll switch between Z Add and Z Sub. So in Z Add mode, it's kind of pulling the surface out. And Z Sub, it's kind of pushing it in, creating those little cracks. So you can see the detailing right here. Um, and you'll see in a moment, the other thing I like to do is I'll use the surface noise feature found in the toolbox to create a procedural noise, which I'll then bake into the surface. Um, and these are all options that you can find in the surface noise area of the tool palette. So what I'll do is, is uh, after creating a certain amount of sculptural detail using Damien Standard Brush, form, form Soft, and all that kind of stuff, I'll apply the surface noise. And then I'll use the clay polish button in the toolbox, which does an overall kind of polish on the surface. But what it does is it leaves a very fine detailed mask behind after you apply the clay polish. And I'll invert that mask and hide it. And then what I'll do is I'll use like some of the sculpting brushes, whether it's inflate or clay, to kind of pull out that fine detail left over from that mask. And it creates a very organic kind of look, especially when you smooth it. So it's a lot of description here, but you can see the process in just a moment. So I'm pulling out some of these spikes here and just refining the surface, looking at reference, of course. Yeah, I'm, I'm also thinking about what is the surface made of? This surface is made of chitin, and chitin is a product, it's like an excreted like polysaccharide. And so here you can see I'm starting to create that fine detail from that noise, surface noise, and I've masked it after doing a clay polish. And now I'm just bringing it out to create that kind of look, that worn chitin look. Like chitin is, you can think of it kind of similar to like your fingernail. Um, but I want to create that sort of wear and tear and sort of the idea that this is an organic created material. It's a product of cell biology. Um, and, you know, I'm getting that quality at the same time I'm working on a gray surface. There's no color on it yet. Um, so you have to be careful. It can tend to look like leather if you're not too careful about it. So it takes a little back and forth. Um, to kind of get that 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 look that I'm looking for. Um, and then I'm using the Damien Standard Brush, the Damn Standard Brush. Again, uh, I'm creating lots of itty-bitty little holes on the surface using the drag rect feature to refine some of the crab pimples that I did before. But I'm also alternating between using Z-Add and Z-Sub with the Damn Standard Brush so that you can see sometimes the, the pores are pushing into the surface, like right there, and sometimes they're pulling out to create these little spikies. And this is kind of alternation between these porous parts and these spiky bits that give the, the surface its personality, it gives it that sort of intimidating look, and that creepy alien look that I want. Um, and so these are all the various different ways I'm creating the detail, and then of course, I do all the sculptural stuff and the fine detail before I get into painting because these, this fine detail that I'm sculpting into the surface, I can use that as masks when I go in and paint the surface. Um, so that kind of saves time, but it also accentuates some of that detail. Because if you look at the reference imagery, a lot of these spiky bits that come out are very dark in color and they contrast with sort of lighter areas around it. Or sometimes you just have a, a contrast in hue or contrast in color, which really, really, uh, or contrast in value rather, which really kind of makes them pop and 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 really draws the eye to the surface, makes it look nice and alien. So, like I said, this is my favorite part of the surface. All the technical stuff, the retopo, the projection, all that other things that I've worked so hard to do. This is the payoff at this moment. 
I'm going to do a quick shout out to Gorongosa Coffee. Normally I keep my videos commercial free, but I had to make an exception for Gorongosa Coffee. Really excellent coffee. All the proceeds go to support the people in Mozambique who live around uh, Gorongosa. Um, by ordering and subscribing, you get anywhere in the world, you get the coffee delivered. I get a couple of shipments each month. It's delicious, fantastic coffee. Uh, it's farmed right around the park um, using extremely eco-friendly techniques. Um, the proceeds go to help a lot of things. They help the local economy in Mozambique, which I mentioned. They support uh, anti-poaching efforts. So you're saving wildlife like elephants and lions and even little bugs like termites and all kinds of great stuff. You're also supporting uh, ed science education and specifically education for young women. Um, so it's a really great way to enjoy coffee while at the same time helping biodiversity, helping rescue the planet in a place that desperately needs it. And, uh, you know, it's a good way to use your money. So check out gorongosacoffee.com. Um, it's really worth a subscription. Highly recommend it. They have a great website. And of course, there's lots of information on their story, which is worth checking out. Hey, YouTube videos.